We're going to prove that the sequence n plus 1 over n converges to 1. That is, the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 divided by n equals 1. And here is the definition of a convergent sequence for our convenience. We previously did a somewhat similar exercise proving that the supremum of this set is equal to 1, and I'll leave a link in the description to that video. For this convergent sequence proof, as usual, we're going to want to begin with some scratch work. Remember, the point of a convergent sequence proof, by definition, is to prove that for every epsilon greater than zero, there is some natural number, big N, so that every term of the sequence after the big Nth term is within epsilon of the supposed limit. In this case, that supposed limit is one. So the scratch work we do before the proof is to identify the big N value that's going to work, as in how far along in the sequence do we need to go to guarantee this inequality for a given value of epsilon. So we actually begin with the inequality that we want our proof to end with, which is the absolute value of terms of the sequence, so n plus one divided by n, minus the desired limit. We think the limit is one, so minus one. This is less than epsilon. That's how our proof should end. Since this is the inequality we want to be true, we'll manipulate it into some equivalent inequalities in order to solve for n. We want to see how big n has to be to guarantee this inequality. To solve for n, we may start by simplifying what's inside these absolute value bars. Let's bring the minus one into this fraction. So that's going to be n plus one. Bringing the minus one into this fraction is going to turn that into a minus n, and then this is all over n. And the absolute value of this is less than epsilon. Then of course, we have n minus n, and so those are going to cancel out, which in the absolute value bars is going to leave one over n, but one over n is always positive, so we can just drop the absolute value bars. So one over n is less than epsilon, and then we can multiply both sides of this inequality by n and divide both sides by epsilon to give us that one over epsilon is less than n, which we might rewrite in the opposite order because that looks nicer. n is greater than one over epsilon. So the idea is we can't just guarantee that this inequality is true, but we can take n to be as big as we want. So if we take n to be this big, we should be able to work backwards to get to this desired inequality. And now we can start to write the actual proof. I'll take our scratch work, shrink it down a little bit, and set it off to the side. As usual, we begin our proof by taking an arbitrary epsilon that's greater than zero. Then, remember, we want to consider terms of the sequence where n is greater than one over epsilon, but in a convergent sequence proof, just to stick to the conventions of the definition, we don't just take little n to be greater than one over epsilon. Instead, we choose a big N that is sufficiently large. So we'll say choose a natural number big N that's greater than one over epsilon. And we know that we can find a natural number this big by the Archimedean principle. Then we want to show that this big N actually works. As in, we want to show that every term of the sequence after the big Nth term is within epsilon of the supposed limit of one. And since we did this scratch work ahead of time, we can be pretty sure that we should be able to demonstrate this inequality is true, since n is greater than big N, which is greater than one over epsilon. So for all n greater than big N, we consider this expression, the distance between terms of the sequence and the supposed limit. So we have the absolute value of n plus one over n minus one, and we want to show that this is less than epsilon. Just as before, we can rewrite this as the absolute value of n plus one minus n, bringing the negative one into this fraction. So n plus one minus n all over n, and then we have n 
minus n, just leaving one in the numerator, so that's equal to the absolute value of one over n, but one over n is always positive since n is a natural number, so this is equal to one over n. Then we want to consider what would happen if we replaced n with one over epsilon. Since n is greater than big N, it's also greater than one over epsilon. So we would be replacing n with a smaller number. That means we would have one divided by a smaller number. Dividing by a smaller number results in a bigger quotient. So we would make the number bigger if we replaced n with one over epsilon. So one over n is less than one over one over epsilon. Again, that's because n is greater than one over epsilon. So dividing by that smaller number, one over epsilon, makes the expression as a whole bigger. And my friends, what is one over one over epsilon equal to? That of course is epsilon. And so we see that the absolute value of n plus one over n minus one is less than epsilon. And so we've shown that for any epsilon greater than zero, if we take big N to be a natural number greater than one over epsilon, then every term of our sequence after the big nth term will be within epsilon of one. And so the terms of this sequence are getting arbitrarily close to one, and so indeed this sequence converges to one. Blind as bats inside to see choirs in four part is home.